Shalom, brothers and sisters. So, yeah, we've reached a convergence time frame in the end of history of mankind, where things are happening so fast. If I get tied up or busy, even with the teaching or something that I'm digging into to present to you guys, just in that time that I'm busy with that, prophecy doesn't stop, the world doesn't stop, it just goes crazy. So, I am busy working on some amazing Passover revelations and insights for you that I want to drop. And uh, here where I'm living, besides the load shedding with the power off all the time due to the corrupt state, in our last cycle yesterday of power being off, the criminals again went in and stole infrastructure. So we have been without power for 35 hours plus. Power came back for one hour and it's off again now. So that's the world we're living in right now. It's crazy. Um, it's normal for us. We roll with the punches, but it is the world that is going to be normal for everyone in the tribulation, if not much, much worse, very, very quickly. But again, due to that, I, I fall behind sometimes on the stories that come through quickly. So I'm going to do this a little bit different today. I'm going to talk you through all the stories I'm behind on that are happening now and have just happened and that'll bring you up to speed with where we're at right now and then I'm going to carry on working on my Passover piece and then we'll chat tomorrow again so here we go at least 25 train cars derail in Paradise Montana unknown substance leaking in the Clark Fork River sound like we've watched this movie before a freight train derailed in Paradise, Montana on Sunday with no injuries or evacuations reported. At least 25 train cars derailed at 9.20 a.m. near Highway 135, leaking an unknown substance from the Clark Fork River, approximately 200 miles northwest of Bozeman. The Montana crash comes less than a week after the 70-car train hauling hazardous materials derailed in North Dakota. So I think at this stage of the game, if you're living in the States, maybe download a map of all your train routes and check when the trains are riding and then have a look and cross-reference that with rivers or farms or anything to do with food and then start plotting potential options. And you might actually start plotting these things before they happen because this is a program and it's happening fast. It is crazy. Um, if people don't realize this or see this yet, they're not going to realize it or see it. They're going to mark, mark themselves very quickly for the beast and queue up for anything that's coming. North Korea warns the U.S. and the Allies of nuclear attack over South Korea drill provocation. Now that the U.S. and the South Korean puppets have openly committed a military provocation against the DPRK, the latter's option will correspond to that. The U.S. and its followers should never forget the fact that their rival state has possessed the nuclear attack capability in practice as well as the characteristics of the people and the army of the DPRK, which do not make empty talk. If he keeps doing this, though, I'm sorry, but that is empty talk. North Korea flexed its, flexed its military and nuclear capabilities throughout the 11 days of joint military exercises between the United States and South Korea. South Korea and the U.S. and Japan hold anti-North Korea submarine drill. Now you know why Kim is upset. The South Korean, U.S. and Japanese navies began their first anti-submarine drills in six months on Monday to boost their coordination against increasing North Korean missile threats. South Korea's military said that two-day drills came as North Korea's recent unveiling of a type of battlefield nuclear warhead prompted worries that the country might conduct a nuclear test this year. So, tensions rising in North Korea and South Korea and Japan. Then this one is exciting, and I enjoy this one, because this has a lot of bearing on what's going to happen to believers after the rapture, those who turn to Christ after we're gone and wake up. French woman faces $13,000 fine for Facebook post calling President Macron filth. Filth. President Macron's filth. And that costs her $13,000. She's in her late 50s, the poor old lady. She's no big threat to the government. But 
How's that for freedom of speech and all those things? It's not a death threat or anything. If found guilty, she could be slapped with a hefty fine of $13,000 or 12,000 euros. Jail time is not on the table. The trial is scheduled to take place in June. The woman's arrest took place last Friday following a complaint filed by the local administrative office in response to her Facebook post. St. Omer prosecutor Mehdi Bezuit confirmed the arrest and provided details. The Facebook post in question was published on March the 21st, a day prior to Macron's televised interview with TF1, where he defended his contentious pension reform plans that have incited protests across the nation. In her Facebook post, the woman wrote, <laughs> This piece of filth is going to address you at 1 p.m. It's always on television that we see this filth. Interesting, hey? So, it's going to get worse, and they're going to use this type of thing all the time, cracking down on believers in that time frame. Again, glad we're not going to be here, but we're already seeing it arrive while we're still here. Now, my favorite guy, UN and Orthodox prelates condemn, <coughs> wait for it, Zelensky and his moves to evict monks and seize churches in the Ukraine. Now, basically, and I won't bore you with the long article, the Orthodox Church is split between Ukraine and Russia. And he has now finally decided, even though the church has said to Putin what he's doing is wrong, and he should stop because they're brothers with the Ukrainians, blah, blah, blah. He's now cracking down on the Orthodox Church from the Russian side. And he's evicting them out of their churches, out of their buildings and out of their homes. They are refusing to go. And all the local worshippers are rallying to their support. And they've reported it to the UN as well. So he's cracking down on faith. That's what it's coming down to. Golden boy. Zelensky. The beggar, the billionaire, the main man, the savior of humanity. Anyway, enough of that. Moving to Israel, God's clock. IDF scrambled fighter jets and downed aircraft near the Syrian border. Helicopters and fighter jets scrambled Sunday night after an unidentified aircraft crossed into Israeli airspace from Syria. The aircraft was monitored by the IAF through the incident. The aircraft was then shot down in an open area. And they said that the aircraft in question did not pose a threat at any stage. According to protocol, the alarm was not activated. The incident was under review. Since that incident, they've had a second aircraft come in as well. They've now proven that both are from Iran. So Iranian arms and shipments and equipment that survived all the Israeli bombings in Damascus and all those areas that are now being tested and used against the Israelis in preparation for... What we as Christians all know is coming. So that, on top of all the other chaos happening around Israel right now, as Passover and Ramadan and Easter are all converging at a hectic speed. The U.S., obviously, is training and arming 5,000 Palestinians, authority troops in Jordan, as a police force. Arming them. Let me just make sure you guys are understanding this amidst the tornadoes. The Biden administration is currently training and arming several thousand Palestinian Authority troops. According to Glick, the training outlined by Lieutenant General Michael R. Fenzel, U.S. Secretary Coordinator for Israel and the Palestinian Authority, provides for the military training of 5,000 Palestinians in counter-terrorism and commando tactics, which they're going to use against the Jews. At the end of the training, the Palestinian officers will bring with them 5,000 rifles and anti-terror equipment, which is going to be used for terror, to Palestinian cities and towns in Samaria and the area surrounding Hebron. The plan also foresees the deployment of foreign forces, including U.S. military forces, on the ground. The new program proposed by the Biden administration is distinctly unlike the original plan in that it explicitly provides guns and bullets and the training to use them, 
creating a special force of armed PA security forces. The PA, whose forces the U.S. seeks to empower, is controlled by the Fatah terror group. PA chairman Mahmoud Abbas is the chairman of Fatah, and Fatah terrorists carried out most of the murderous terror attacks in 2021 and 2022. Several of those attacks carried out by PA security officers. So obviously Biden thinks it's a wonderful plan to not only train them and equip them, but to then arm them and send them back to Israel with bodyguards from America as soldiers on the ground. So it makes it even more difficult for the Israelis to react and act against the situation. You're arming her enemies. What is the result going to be back home? Always look at that. Always. And there's always a following result back home. King Abdullah from Jordan, it is the duty of every Muslim to deter Israeli escalation against holy sites. Every time it's Passover, every time, every single time, they spread these lies that the Jews are going to rush the Temple Mount and destroy everything and take it over. That they're being attacked just because people want to go and pray. They're under attack. He, under attack from God pretty soon. So Jordan's King Abdullah on Sunday said it is their duty to deter Israeli escalations against Islamic and Christian holy sites in Jerusalem, trying to curry favor and join ties with the Christians. The monarch made the remarks at a meeting in the palace in Amman with Palestinian Authority head Mahmoud Abbas and Muslim and Christian leaders from Jerusalem. Shame on you, Christian leaders from Jerusalem. Abdullah expressed solidarity with the delegation, saying, We will always be with you, and you will overcome all the challenges before you. But no word on all the terror, or all the babies driven over by cars, or all the flash killings and stabbings taking place on a daily basis. Nothing. That's fine. But this, this is not fine. Sweeping them up and getting everyone into a frenzy to cause more terror attacks and hatred and murder. That's fine. Shocking chaos, this is now the latest headline, as Israeli forces storm Islam's third holiest site. It is Israel's holiest site, just by the way. No one talks about this. During Ramadan, soldiers fire tear gas and stun grenades and beat worshippers inside Al-Aqsa's mosque amid rising tensions. Israeli forces raided the mosque on Wednesday and attacked Palestinian worshippers. Palestinian media reported, raising fears of wider tension as Islamic and Jewish holidays overlapped. Tensions have been high in East Jerusalem and the West Bank for months, and fears of further violence have been fueled with the convergence of the Muslim holiday fast of Ramadan and the Passover. Palestinian news agency Wafa reported that dozens of worshippers who spend all the night during Ramadan praying were injured when the police raided the mosque. I was asking why they raided the mosque. It was not immediately clear what sparked the violence. The Israeli police said it used force to evacuate worshippers who were holed up at the mosque with fireworks, rocks and sticks. They added that an officer's leg was injured by a stone and dozens of rioters were arrested. They did this last time too. They literally store up rocks and fireworks in their holiest site, third holiest site. How holy is the site if you're using it to store rocks and fireworks? The violence in Jerusalem triggered a wave of protests and condemnations from Palestinians. In Gaza, Hamas called for large protests and people began gathering in the streets with calls to head for the heavily guarded Gaza-Israel frontier. On Tuesday, a Palestinian suspect stabbed two Israelis near an army base by Tel Aviv in the latest incident. Israeli police said in a statement it was forced to enter the compound after masked agitators locked themselves in the mosque with fireworks, sticks and stones. When the police entered, stones were thrown at them and fireworks fired from inside the mosque by the agitators, adding that one of their police officers was wounded. So they had reason to go in there and stop this before it got out of hand just now and later on. And they had to go in and they were attacked. But the media is just going to tell you that the Jews went in 
and attacked a bunch of peaceful people praying. If your prayers involve fireworks and rocks, you're obviously serving a demon. Something is wrong. You need to wake up and serve the living God. God doesn't need me to throw rocks or fire fireworks to get his attention. He needs my heart surrendered to him. That is the difference between a loving, real God and some demonic thing represented by stone. And that is the roll up. And there's a lot more that I've missed. That is just the last two days. And I'm keeping you guys updated on the community wall as well with volcanoes and earthquakes. The birth pains are through the roof. The earth is groaning. All of nature is calling out the tension for the release that's coming as the restrainer is removed. The bride is collected and snatched away. And the way is open for Daniel's 70th week. The time of Jacob's trouble. When Elijah and Moses come down to speak to them. When the 144,000 Jews go out and spread the gospel. When the angels fly across the heavens preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's heart doesn't stop for mankind, even those that are too hard-hearted to listen now or to turn from their wicked ways. To appoint angels to fly across the heavens that they will visibly see and hear preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's desperately trying to reach those of our loved ones, those that have heard but haven't turned, and the rest with hard hearts. Because he died for everybody. He's doing everything he can to give everyone a chance. Don't ever forget that. That's how much he loves us. It is unfathomable, especially now with Passover, how much he loves us. How deep is the well of his love for us. We would drown trying to find its bottom because there is no bottom. God bless you. Keep looking up. Shalom.